fact that I'm speaking here tonight is a testimony of God's continued work in my life. You see, up until now, I've managed to avoid my greatest fear, this. However, the privilege of sharing God's grace with you all is greater than that fear. The first sign of God's presence in my life came after I accepted Christ. At the age of 35, and for the first time in my life, I prayed to God regarding a painful relationship with my father. The next morning, our Raleigh newspaper headlines read, Billy Graham comes to Charlotte. I smiled, realizing this had to be God's answer. On that beautiful Sunday, September Sunday in Erickson Stadium, I responded to the call and was saved. What happened the next day was truly a miracle. I woke with a warm, light feeling in my chest, which gave me immense peace. I knew this was heaven sent. Sharing this news with my brother and mother, each replied, I've been praying for you. God then placed a strong desire in me to join a church, and Christ Church was the one. A gifted Christ Church layperson was instrumental in guiding me to a path of healing with my father. I must admit, after developing a relationship with God, I thought life would be smooth sailing. But as the old saying goes, strong sailors aren't created on calm seas, and my seas have been anything but calm. In 2008, my thyroid was abnormal and possibly cancerous. Thankfully, surgery confirmed it was not. A few months later, while praying, I believe God spoke to me, stating, I will heal you mentally, physically, and spiritually. I found this odd since I just received good medical news, and spiritually I had been led to him. Well, as you can see tonight, the mental is still a work in process, but I never lost sight of those words. Even though I felt poorly for two years and doctors found nothing wrong until September of 2010 during a mammogram, subsequent tests and a biopsy confirmed my diagnosis, breast cancer. At this point, I claim those words from two years prior, I will heal you. But little did I know the endurance involved. Test, chemotherapy, surgery, radiation, and then in November of 2011, a stroke. Through it all, the blessings outweighed the misery. Christ Church members, plus family and friends, not only fed our family for six months, but prayed for us as well. After all the treatments, my oncologist said I had CPR, or a complete pathologic response to the chemo. I was essentially cancer-free, and a, this is a great indicator of long-term survivorship. The words, I will heal you, resonated with me, although life did not get any easier. In July of 2012, my beloved brother came home. During our time together, I began to question God. Why was I being led to remember all the details of my healthy, strong FBI agent brother and his visit? In August, he called me to say the mass behind his sternum required surgery. Afterwards, he suffered suffered a massive stroke and was given less than a 2% chance of surviving. A life-saving craniectomy was performed. The indelible memories God gave me in that visit were finally realized as a premonition. My brother has made a remarkable recovery. In April of 2013, our mother required brain surgery and was unable to return to her home. In June of this year, we lost our dad. It would have been easy for me to give up, to say I've had enough, but in those dark days, of suffering, I grew closer to God. I considered my suffering a blessing because throughout the past four years, God's continued work in my life is apparent. I'd like to leave you with a Bible verse which I found inspirational. It's 2 Corinthians 12, 9. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Thank you for allowing me to share my story with you tonight.